Folks, this is Damon on David's Brain. Welcome back to our ongoing Let's Play of Disco Elysium for the PS4. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and contribute to my Patreon links in the description at the bottom. All right, last time we st uh, well we managed to uh, uh, get ourselves a lead on La Responsabilité, and we finally embraced Hardcore. And yeah, now I am just running around the city looking for posters of Arnold Van Yick, but then Visual Calculus chimed in. Ruination has come. The broken arch has betrayed the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. All right, let's see what happened here. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline. Fired from the water. A straight shot into Revachon. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. The wind blows through your hair. The sea breeze cuts around you, high on the balcony, as you stare over the edge of the sea. Taking the ocean? The waves of the Martinez Inlet roll over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscure the better part of the remains. This is where the damage came from. From somewhere in the inlet, the cannons. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap? was thrown into the ocean. All right, the ruins in the water? Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to 12 once did. Restoration has failed. What the shelling took out was never rebuilt. Who did this? The, this damage? The fleet, the combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five nation army, hundreds of vessels, they massed airships further down, in the Bay of Revachon. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachon. Coalition warship Archer can shoot 50 shells a minute on 20 co-aligned arches. They will reach the city in 58 seconds. Hey Kim, do you know who shelled our city? The coalition. But that was a long time ago. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. He fears the discussion. Hmm. I wonder what I look up on this ledge. From the eyes of a seagull. A nest of brown hair, not worth the 50-foot dive. From a pedestrian on the dock, a rugged man staring out to sea, mere feet from fatality. From a guest on the balcony of the whirling in rags, a silhouette imposing enough to be seen at a distance. Hmm. Time to go. Right, well, that was all sorts of interesting, I guess. I wonder if there's one of those posters inside here. Dirt. All right, well, didn't find anything important in here, but at least I found some extra cash. That's always helpful.
I don't know, should I get rid of volumetric stick compressor? Now where am I going to find that transmitter? Wait a minute. Maybe... Yeah, if I remember right, there was a transmitter inside the, uh, inside that cab. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking about. The one with the, uh, with our 8th Hardy. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to find something there. The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. More old bullet holes. Half a century at least. From the revolution. Let's see. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. Your chest feels tight looking at them. It's closing in, caving in, ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay there? Man, I start feeling really bad for a second there. Might be the after effects of your past escapade. What are you looking at? These bullet holes look like the bullet holes we saw before. Bullet holes generally look the same, so probably. But you're right. More old bullet holes from the revolution. Man, how many people got shot during that revolution? Plenty. Ugh. Cheery. This coin operated viewer is facing south. It has given up all its secrets. There seems to be a sunken sea fort on the islet in the bay. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? What's the tourist attraction doing um, here? There was a revitalization project in 49. A design studio tried restoring Martinez to its pre war glory. It didn't stick. What happened? They got as far as the street lamps and that statue on the intersection before something went sour. I suspect it was Evar's class doing. We muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. Can we do something about it? We should have done something about the Union ten years ago. That ship has sailed, officer. Mm. Your money disappears into the coin slot. A clunk. The ring of metal. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab gray shape. 
like a ghost. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. It's concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. The ruins are some kind of building there. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out. Hmm. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Ah. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys. You know this to be the stuff around the large wooden building. Yeah, so obviously Kuno's been there. Great. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Something with great kinetic energy seems to have impacted the cuirass, around where the heart is. A bullet? Someone shot him in the heart. Interesting. Lieutenant, has someone shot the king? Okay. I can't see it, but I take your word for it. What do you think? Well, Martinez is riddled with bullet holes. This place saw a lot of action during the revolution. But the statue is recently renovated, so maybe a joke? Target practice or a political statement? Political. It's a king and he shot. It definitely sounds like a, uh, definitely sounds political. Why not? What this shows us is guns aren't too uncommon here. And people still shoot them, sometimes at kings. The king stands high above you. So a lorry abandoned by its the smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. All right, our transmitter. There's something odd about the passenger seat. The seating fabric has been pulled tight over the lower side of the seat where the toolbox should be. All right, the radio transceiver. It takes a few moments, but eventually the transceiver slides from its greased socket mount with an eminently satisfying chin. As you take the transceiver in your hands, the lieutenant bites his lower lip. Apparently, deep in thought. Funny, isn't it? What do you mean? The lady driver used this same radio to evade coalition authorities, and now you are using it to contact <laughs> them directly. It's just ironic, that's all. Yeah, no, I just noticed that. <laughs> Where the transceiver used to be, there's just a rectangular shadow now. Examiner? It. It's about the size of a small paving stone, and nearly as heavy. Now that you're looking at it more closely, you realize the various styles and meters make it look vaguely like a face. A distinctive triangular logo forms the nose. That's the mark of Estaz Electronica, one of the major manufacturers of advanced radio equipment. Do you think we'll actually be able to reach the coalition with us? You've surprised me more than once during the course of our investigation, but I have to say it still seems like a remote scenario. <laughs> remote scenario. I get it. <laughs> the movie stars are still smiling from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a pull-out toolbox tucked under the close the
let's see, here we are, the highly advanced transceiver, an EH4 uh, multimodal transceiver, produced by engineers at the Erhats Electronica, designed for maximum adaptability. In the case of this unit, the frequency dial has been replaced by a key. Alright, uh, heading on back to the church then. Yeah, but first, while we're in the neighborhood, let's see if we can uh, go and take care of the, uh, uh, try and take another poke at that other check. Hm. Odd that you didn't catch this graffito earlier. Van Yick Overdrive, it says. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? The mercenary, eh? The man was. Your race descent has temporarily halted, but you will fall again. Yeah, never mind. I'm not bothering with this asshole. Uh, too bad there's no way to warp from the harbor dock all the way back to, uh... uh too bad there isn't a warp point in the harbor. Hmm? At the bottom of the new union logo and demand democracy. A common office radio. Like any of those found in countless waiting rooms, lounges, and other semi-public spaces all over the world. Hey Kim, how do I get the transceiver out of this thing? There's usually a little switch somewhere. Ah yes, it's the one that says release. Ah. The lock disengages with a nice click. You may now safely remove the transceiver unit. There's nothing obviously remarkable about it. It's about the size of a common pasta box with knobs of molded plastic. What else is there to say? If this transceiver were a person, it would be an accountant at a large logistics firm. Perfectly competent, but unexceptional. Hmm, I prefer a transceiver with a little more flash and style. Hmm, I don't think the people who typically buy these machines are very concerned with questions of style. The transceiver appears slightly hurt by your comment. With its transceiver gone, the radio has ceased its persistent buzzing. It is as silent as a headstone. Let's see the highly advanced transceiver and the perfectly adequate transceiver. A common radio transceiver produced by a generic manufacturer. There must be tens of thousands like it all over the world, each one indistinguishable from every other. The payphone. Well, hey, at least now I have options. This is the Night Watchman's booth.
don't see nothing else around here. Okay. Glove of Sun means Whale Fjord and Arden. Okay, whatever that means. Yeah, no, I was just looking for some more, uh, uh any more, uh, that, uh, any more, uh, cues. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Let's see. All right, let's give it a whirl. As it's always been, it's impossible to open a container with the rhetoric. Maybe you're losing your mind. No reply. The knock produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Hmm. Should we? lessened since you were last here if anything it seems and as it's always been it's impossible to what's the uh, cargo container and ceiling Draw has not left despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you. A beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello? Is there anybody in there? The door stands silent. Satisfied, detective? Try again. If there's someone in there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. Ahoy! Come on in! Mega rich light bending guy. Oh god, what the hell have I found this time? You can't be serious. <laughs> oh boy, looks like we found something. Oh, oh great, looks like we found even more craziness. the hell uh, did my money just glitch out what the shit the man stands at the far end of the shipping container it's hard to say anything more about him you cannot make out any of his details but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital the feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention, like soldiers preparing for review. Mm. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, an echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. 
Too late. Uh, the reality is literally warping around this guy. What the shit? In the general stillness. Only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. Hello. Welcome. Come in. Make yourself at home. Sorry, I'm not better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. You can't hear him exactly. Yet, you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange. An overwhelming hum covers everything. Voice doesn't escape from him. Now, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Uh, what you see of his body appears composed. In a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Uh, who are you? Who am I? <laughs> oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyhow, my name is Rustam Diodore, investor, license holder, and extremely high net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Diodore, I am Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner. Harrier Dubois. Pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois. I must admit, the name suits you very well. Uh, who or what exactly are you? Are you magic? Who am I? <laughs> Anyhow, Mr. Pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois. Uh, how did, I must how did you become so rich? Oh, Lord, not this again. What's the matter, Kim? Oh, nothing. It's just that we've got this murder to solve, and yet you go around asking everyone about money. And every time I ask, are you sure this is related to the case, you say, sure, Kim, I think it is. Well, I'm asking everybody. And yet, it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. <laughs> it's quite all right. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in Graz. Oh. So, trust fund baby then. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. Mm. And blow. Actually, at the level this guy is, it takes several generations to do that. But, alright. Right. Uh, what's it like being an extremely high net worth individual? I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. Well, I mean, it's great that you've done so well from yourself and not just going blowing everything on you like frivolous crap, but don't you think you owe some of that wealth to the rest of society? Sure, and they benefit when I buy things to stimulate the economy. Do you know how many jobs it takes to build and maintain a racing yacht? Uh, hundreds? Dozens, at least. Of course, in the future, it'll all be automated. But my point is this. Every man gets what he earns. It's the height of tyranny to take that from him. Uh, I guess what he earns, eh? Uh... Hmm. Capital makes one speechless, does it not? Lines like the sun that rises from beyond the horizon after a gloomy winter. Hey, hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What is going on with the light in this place? That's what you need to ask him about. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, there's, yeah, I mean, there's the fact that reality is literally warping around you. What the shit? What do you mean? Uh, well, I don't know how to put it. You look somehow a little different. I mean, literally your portrait here looks like your freaking tie-dye. You and Egghead to get along just fine. Are you talking about my chin? Uh, no, no, I mean, I can't even see you. It's as if something is happening to the light. Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect, though I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our 
Weiss Wiesemann coefficient. The Weiss Wiesemann coefficient is a ratio designed to reflect the difference in net worth between individuals. When the coefficient is close to 1, or 100%, it means one person possesses all the net worth among that group of individuals. It's been observed that when the Weiss Wiesemann coefficient reaches about 0.96 or so, the laws of physics begin to bend around the high net worth individual. So what? Uh, are you telling me that you're so rich that light literally bends around your face? Is that what I'm getting here? Come on, other things, but calm down. I'm but a lowly single-digit billionaire. Uh, really? No, not really. <laughs> there are actually quite many digits. Kim, are you saying this weirdness? I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who is unusually well dressed for Martinez in a cargo container, which I admit is odd. Oh great! So you're the uh, so I'm the only one who's seeing oh, the world bend around this guy. Great. Yes, I imagine that does look strange to you, my container. Yeah, about that. What are you doing in this container? Traveling. This is a great way to get around. It's fun. It's safe, and it gives me lots of time to think. By the way, let me now ask you a question. Where are we exactly? Let's see. We're in Marnay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're in Marnay, a district of Revachal, the former capital of the world. Ah, Revachal. I remember walking its streets as a teenager. There used to be a bowling alley in Stella Maris. I wonder if it's still there. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banding together to ask for money. Wait, why don't you help them? You got so much money, you can't make a difference to you. I mean, you're literally just bleeding in cash. You can't go wrong. There simply aren't enough hours a day to hand out all the handouts. It's like feeding seagulls. There are always more and they never seem to do anything interesting with it, except more seagulls. Spending money is a matter of desire. I'm sure you agree. I don't have the desire for spending it like that. So you just travel from place to place via a shipping container and you haven't had like a concussion or anything like that? Smart, no? It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. Luxury yachts, high fidelity portable radio systems, fail proof outdoor, and so on. It just gets a bit middle class after a while. A bit bourgeois. Uh, so you're saying being rich isn't worth all the hassle. What? No, I didn't say that at all. Being rich is great. Uh, just don't tell anyone I told you that. Right. Uh, you're a rich investor, right? Can I have some cash? Could you please stop asking people for money? It does not reflect well on the RCM, and to be perfectly frank, we can't afford to look worse than we already do. No, you're right. That was extremely unprofessional. I apologize. It's perfectly all right. Based on your appearance, I can tell I'm dealing with a civilized man. Playing the pity card, are we? Whatever gets us over the moon, baby. I'm your hand to be dealt. As you may know, us high net worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand. Investments and liquidity are enemies of one another. I think... I only have coins for coffee machines. Here is three real. How much can you get for this? Uh, are you sure you don't have any more? I thought you were a billion. Uh, it gets me almost nothing. Sorry. Uh, no. Uh, let's try to be nice here. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. You're welcome. You know, maybe you can make that money grow. Come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? Uh, let's see, a very low conceptual... Uh, let's see, art degree is useless. Okay, let's give this a whirl. If business planning were really your strong suit, you probably wouldn't be a cop. Hmm. Uh, you should invest in the RCM. He should what? The volunteer police force. And why would I do that? 
Let's see. Because it's chronically mismanaged, deeply corrupt, and completely outmatched. Just a minute. The RCM has its difficulties, but generally speaking... Well, a little bit of extra finance can go a long ways, Kim, especially in, uh, uh, in forms of law enforcement. You know, that's exactly what I've heard. From what I understand, the RCM, as currently constituted, is essentially a lost cause. Still, the idea of a privatized police force is extremely forward-thinking. Uh-oh. You could even say it's ultra, ultra liberal. Oh god, what the hell have I done? Tell me, if you could invest in the RCM, where would you direct your resources? Bigger guns. Large caliber motherfuckers that leave exit wounds the size of grapefruits. Uh, no. The latest technological wonders. That could work. Take care of the people who protect the people. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely gonna take care of that. Paid raises for officers and generous benefits. Hmm. I don't believe in giving anyone money for nothing, but maybe there is something to using market incentives to improve performance. If I could interject, the RCM's problems are mainly structural. We are hamstrung by a lack of clear lines of authority, and our system of performance reviews strongly disincentivizes interprising cooperation. Uh, yeah, so maybe your magic money could do something about that? I think the lieutenant's right. Your problems run much deeper than equipment or funding. The entire org structure of the RCM needs to be redefined. You need a unified chain of command. New metrics for measuring performance that reward the real police work. Does that sound right? Yep. Yes, yes. That's precisely what we need. So you'll do it? Hell no. Can you imagine how much work that would take? Why would I do that when I can just speculate on exotic financial derivatives from the comfort of this shipping container? Oh, God damn it. The thing about investing is that the less work you have to do, the better. Don't overthink. That's what return on investment means. The lieutenant's disappointment is palpable. It's like someone just shot his dog. Uh. Now, was there anything else I could help you gentlemen with? Well, it was worth a shot. L uh, thanks for your time, bud. It was a real pleasure. Sadly, though, my current lifestyle prevents me from remaining more than a brief time in any one place. Perhaps we'll meet again. Somewhere far away. Farewell, friend. And may your peace of mind guide you to happiness. Well, easy for you to say, where you literally don't have anything to worry about uh, financial-wise. Ugh. Anyways, bankruptcy sequence. Business loves science. Uh, business loves silence. The second loudest sound in the world, eclipsed only by the collective screams of market crash victims. So let me whisper to you. Do you feel the veil of the sun god slipping? Are the better days gone? Are we entering bankruptcy? Is the company going to go down and leave you in the gutter with the rest of the dregs, delivering parcels for soup money? You need to crisis manage your way out of this. And yeah, somehow uh, I think I'll be able to, uh, uh, let's see. All Modric spike checks unlocked. Let's see, there's the cafeteria window and the smoker on the balcony. Well, that was a complete utter waste of time. But then again, hey, I managed to give some boost up to rhetoric, and yeah, it definitely sounds like I could definitely use some uh, boost in rhetoric. Although, yeah, putting the, uh, yeah, giving a guy like that the idea of a privatized police force, yeah, that is all kinds of a very, 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 very bad idea. Like, oh, dear Christ, what have I done? Yeah, I honestly thought we were able to get something good with that, but, yeah, nope. A rust in control. Crane does not rip. No screech of metal. 
And besides, uh, does Everard know that there is a, a mega, mega rich glowing man just hiding out inside of... Well, I mean, of course he doesn't know. Hmm. Well, I mean, hey, if he's so uh, well, if he's got so much money and he doesn't care, um, I mean, honestly, if he if he wanted to justify uh, uh, blowing all the money on the on the uh, on the RCM, you know, I actually put uh, actually you know make the cops actually do their job, you know, actually uh, you know, maybe help people instead of just taking bribes, helping out gangsters and crap like that. And even then, it's most uh, the RCM is mostly just a it seems to be just a volunteer force anyway, not even like an official police force. It's just, ugh. Ugh. I mean, I, I helped to put the uh, yeah, the real uh, the real police officers, the people that want to help uh, uh, people out in the street, and not just you know uh, put a, a bunch of uh, uh, let's see a bunch of bootstrap morally corrupt thugs that'll do anything for a quick buck or for whatever sick shit they're into. Uh, I don't know. Well, if anything, hopefully I at least planted an idea in his head. Oh well, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe like, use the money to revitalize Martinet? Yeah, but no, uh, guys like that, he just, uh, he's got money, so who cares? You should tell people to fuck off more often. No, you shouldn't. You're an officer of the law. Uh, it's not really my style. Hey, I've got an idea on how to fix your style. Maybe you should just go fuck yourself, yeah? Ever thought of that? You're an asshole. Well, I mean, hey, if anybody deserves to be told to fuck off, then I gladly will tell them to fuck off, but not everybody, all right? Only if they deserve it. And I think that's about as far as we're gonna... Uh, let's see. Yo, man, what's on your mind? I found a radio transceiver. So your cop ways came through again. Impressive. Let's see what you got. Uh, someone was using this to coordinate a drug smuggling operation. Thought I felt a special sign coming off this one. I'll just have egg pop in a frequency dial here, and we should be set. Really, has there been a more apt pairing of man and transceiver? This is a portent of great success. Yay. Right, Lil Fera, we're ready to do this. I have to warn you, though, once we commit, there's no stopping until we've seen it all the way through. No pauses, no second chances. This is our shot. You got it. So any cop prep you got to do, you do it now. We'll wait if we have to. Uh, wait, don't you say we need some kind of power supply? Don't sweat that. Egg found something down near the water lock. Some maniac abandoned the perfectly good power source. 
That maniac is obviously you, which makes the power source your sunken coupe 40. Uh, you mean the motor carriage that I crashed? Yeah, next time we're finally going to take on La Responsibilité. So, till next time, folks, this is David on David's Brain. See you when I see you. Bye bye, and remember, HARDCORE!